See the lateral movement of Bostwick. Double hooks, be wait for by Fishgold. Big swings from Bostwick. Level change there from Fishgold as he told us he would throughout this fight. Big right hand in the left, another right hand from Bostwick. Huge shots now. Again, Fishgold waving Bostwick forward. Fishgold just waving him in even when he's getting wrecked. The jab counter right hand from Bostwick. 60 seconds remaining round number one. We said very intriguing in the middleweight division, living up to it. Three left hook for Fishgold right hand. Bostwick turns out. I'm a little surprised Fishgold's not trying to utilize that clinch a little bit right now. Wears the opponent out a little bit. Frustrated. Fishgold resetting. Jab from his waist. Nice gold you see by design, keeping that left hand low, lands the right hand. Nice gold again, throwing that jab very low. Closing stages, round number one. Right hand not getting through. That right hand on the overhand not getting through from Fish Gold. Quick, sticking out the left hand, sticking out the right hand. Hands down on the reset from Fishgold. We move to round two. And, and right here you see Bosswick with a good left hand. That looked like it throws Fishgold up for a second, follows that up with a good right hand. And Sean, I'm surprised right now we haven't seen either one of these guys doing any body work right now. Both guys are doing a very good job of blocking upstairs. You know what that means? The body's wide open. So you get a guy to keep his hands up and then, and then you hit him in the body. That'll change things really quickly. But we don't, we don't go hunting for it. Let the shot come. Yeah? He keeps dipping down. When he Hopefully the corners are talking about that in between rounds. When you see a guy with his hands up blocking, go to the body. Bring those hands down. Corners out. Call of corners out from Dan Mergliata, bringing both fighters up to scratch. Round number two. Swick off the scratch line with a jab. One, two from Fishgold. Just missed with that right that landed on the follow. Again from Fishgold. Round number four in BKFC for Jake Bostwick. Far away the most fluid that he has looked. Good left hand check left hook from Bostwick. Rear right uppercut from Bostwick. Coming forward again, half tie plug. Big shots on the inside. Now to the left hand. Down goes Chris Fishgold. Mouthpiece went flying out there too. That was a great job by Bostwick right now. That's overwhelmed his opponent. You see Fishgold cut under his left eye. Mouthpiece knocked out right back in. Fishgold tried to grab the clinch right there. It did not work. Bostwick just continued to throw punches. One two misses from Fishgold. Fishgold again on the one two. Nothing there. Bostwick resetting. Stiff jab from Jake Bostwick. Right hand from Bostwick. Fishgold still coming forward off the jab. 50 seconds remaining round two. Knocked down number two. Fishgold saying he slipped. I didn't see a punch land there. I think he might be right. Officially ruled a knockdown. So officially two knockdowns reported by Jake Bostwick in this fight. Now 25 seconds remaining round two. It's still coming for left hook from Bostwick. It's the long jab from Fishgold up there. Overhand left. Check left hook not there from Fishgold. Good start to this middleweight fight from Jake Bostwick. And that is knockdown number three. This good start has gotten that much better for Bostwick. This goal just said wow. to Mergliata, can't breathe. Mergliata stops it, and that is a big win for Jake Boston.
quick in his home city, Monday. And, and Sean, sometimes you can see the evolution of a fighter. We talk about after the first fight they grow, about their fourth fight they grow. You can tell right there, Jake Bosman, that was the best he's looked for. He said you can't breathe, but he was just in our fighter meeting, Jake Bostwick said, I really feel that I'm understanding bare knuckle better than ever. And here's that first knockdown. Look at Bostwick in the clinch. Just continues to throw punches right there. Knocked his opponent's mouth. People just kept going. That's exactly what you're supposed to do in there. Now he sees the end. He sees the finish line. Just continues to throw hard punches. John, we talked about... Fishko said he feels like his opponent mentally breaks sometimes. But at the same time, when you get a guy like that, they're all about emotion. He was on a high right there. He knew he hurt his person. He hurt his opponent. He was ready for the kill. The evolution indeed of the ultra-talented Jake Bostwick against the ultra-talented Chris Fishko. Three knockdowns to victory. And the outpouring of emotions and victory for Jake Bostwick. Jeff Houston is set, we go to him now. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Big Dan Mergliata, steps in and calls a stop to the fight at one minute, 58 seconds into round number two. For your winner by TKO, Bruno Jake Bostwick. Sean, Jake Bostwick is just getting better and better as a fighter. You can see that fight was the best he's looked for us. Cannot wait to see him fight again, see if he continues to evolve. Two wins now in BKFC for Jake Bostwick, and that win with authority. Jake Bostwick was never rattled, never unraveled, and was dominant on the inside with heavy punches. Three knockdowns to the finish, the winner by way of second round TKO, Jake Bostwick defeats Chris Fishgold. The world's most exciting combat sport, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship presents BKFC 38, Friday, April 21st. Watch as Daniel Strauss steps out of the cage and into the squared circle to fight skilled bare knuckle vet, Dat B. Dat Win. Plus, see brutal Jake Boswick and Isaac the Honey Badger Doolittle throw down. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Watch it live on the BKFC app. Download it now at BKFC.com. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all new library of content, including behind the scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. A 185 pound world title eliminator. You see our numbers. They are presented by Crescent Tools, Isaac Doolittle versus Jared Warren. And talk about Ray, Sean. Look at the reach advantage for Jared Warren. Huge reach advantage. We've talked about it. Isaac Doolittle said, there's no question. I have to get inside if I want to win this fight. Warren knows this. Doolittle knows this. That's what's going to have to happen for this to be Isaac Doolittle's fight. Isaac Doolittle, two wins in BKFC, his most recent coming last October. He defeated Jay Jackson by majority decision. And what we talked about, Isaac Doolittle knows exactly what he needs to do. He has an ability to make people fight his fight. His fight's inside. Look, that's what he does. I've never seen somebody with the ability to make everybody fight the way he wants to, but that's why he's been able to be 2-0 in there, fighting his style, making it work for him. That's what he's going to have to do tonight to get the victory. Isaac Doolittle, 2-0 and in BKFC, overall in bare knuckle, he is 3-0. He's fought three times in his pro MMA career. Doolittle holds a bachelor's degree in biochemistry and molecular biophysics. He brings that very cerebral approach to fighting. Doolittle said, if I stay on the outside, I'm getting knocked out, I'm getting concussed by Jared Warren. He said, quote, there's no subtlety to my game plan. Inside, stay inside, clinch, make it dirty, continually pressure Jared Warren. Absolutely, and, and we know that, everybody knows that. Doesn't have a long reach, very short reach, so he's got to work to get inside, utilize head movement, 
He does whatever he has to push off that back fit to get in deep, but he cannot continue to take punches as he gets inside. But that's where that being a smart fighter comes in, Sean. Utilizing head movement to get inside. To get our co-main event started, Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for the co-main event. Which is for a BKFC light heavyweight world title eliminator. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds. Presented to you by Crescent Tools. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears snakeskin. He stands six feet, one inch tall. His official weight, 185.6 pounds. His bare knuckle record stands at three victories opposite a single defeat. Fighting out of Tampa, Florida. Here is Jared Captain Deadpool. Whoa! And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall. His official weight, 183.8 pounds. He is undefeated in the squared circle at 3 and 0. Oh, fighting out of Abilene, Kansas. Here is the undefeated Isaac Honey Badger. Do And our referee in charge of the action, Nick Behrens. In preparation for tonight's co-main versus Jared Warren, Isaac Doolittle said, I studied custom auto fighters. Mike Tyson, Floyd Patterson, Jose Torres. I looked at their entries. I have to enter effectively. All right, gentlemen. Go the line. Number one. Round number one. Black trucks for Isaac Doolittle, great trucks for Jared Warren. So this is where we have that classic southpaw versus a right-handed fighter. It's those straight punches right down the pipe. Nothing but respect between these two fighters. There's the long straight jab from Warren. Right now this is 100% the range that Warren wants. A little fainting, thinking about those custom auto like entries. And you can just see right now, Warren has that left hand just cocked and ready. As soon as Doolittle tries to get inside, he's going to try and throw that right down and break his nose. Nothing reckless from either fighter. Smart, tactical, technical. Warren from the southpaw stance, loading up on that left hand. Doolittle looking for the open level change, couldn't find his way into the clinch. And there it was right there, even though Doolittle came in and didn't really try and commit totally. You can just see right through that left hand. Just letting his opponent know it's there. Be careful every time you come in, I'm going to hit you. Straight jab by Warren. 45 seconds remaining round one. Doolittle showing the head movement. hand to catch those left-handed jabs of Isaac Doolittle. There's the roll under into the clinch. First full entry into the pocket. Now double unders by Jared Doolittle. So smart, Chris, that he gets the immediate break from Nick Barron. I mean, great job. Doolittle finally gets in and was able to do absolutely nothing. Closing seconds, round number one of our co -main. It's a BKFC light heavyweight world title eliminator. Isaac Doolittle versus Jared Warren. We move to round two. The Crescent Lufkin Shock Force tape measure has the durability to handle any child side. Measure faster with the 14-foot standout and two-sided blade with easy-to-read markings. Did we mention the durability? Crescent Tools, trusted by the trades. Available now at your local tool retailers. Now we make it happen. So it looked like there was all three judges gave that round towards. What? Yeah, yeah, no, we're down. Yeah, he won that round, 10-9 down. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, how you feel? 
Look like Doolittle really had trouble trying to figure out that range, how to get in without taking that shot. Neither guy was coming in reckless, so I know Doolittle wants Warren to come in and engage. It makes it easy for him to get that clinch. Warren's not biting. He's waiting, waiting to counter. If Doolittle comes in, he can still land that jab, can Warren. And Doolittle can't land, so he has to come in. He's going to have to make this fight happen. Warren Gentlemen. might be just as happy to stay on the outside and land that jab. Just got a sense of this great crowd here at Interest Bank Arena in downtown Wichita, Kansas. This is a smart, enthusiastic fight crowd. They are firmly behind the home state fighter from Abilene, Isaac Doolittle. Warren, continuing to load the left hand. Doolittle continuing to look for the entry, putting out the left. Stiff left jab from Jared Warren. Warren to the body with the left hand. Staff jab right hand. Such a tactical fight right now. It's that awkward head movement. Jerking style right now. Doolittle trying to work to get inside. I'd like to see the uppercut be up there. There's the uppercut right there. Good job by Warren. Warren uppercutting to Doolittle's body. Doolittle on the overhand right. So far, this range has been in favor of Jared Warren. Doolittle looking for the roll under. I mean, Doolittle doing a good job with the head movement right there to get inside. But I'd like to see him push off that back foot, really throw some hard jabs, and really do that step jab. Twice now, Doolittle has gotten in, and both times Warren immediately snatching the double overhooks to get the separation. Warren is simply not playing in the clinch. There's a big right hand by Isaac Doolittle on the overhand. Doolittle is cut on his left cheek. All things being equal, that's a great place to be cut. Man, and there is those uppercuts right now. Warren really starting to see exactly what I'm seeing right there. Now Doolittle coming in, landing uppercuts, big left hand in the right hand. And down goes Jared Warren. Wow. Huge job. Huge shots being landed right there. And Warren is still hurt. Six, seven, eight. You good to go? Come to me. And this way. Final seconds, round number two. Doolittle again on the level change. Uppercut by Jared Warren. Big left hand, the right hand. There is the bell and the end of the second round. Doolittle immediately apologizing. We couldn't hear the bell. It got so loud here at Intrust Bank Arena. Doolittle oh, apologizing to Nick Barron's and Jared Warren, saying yeah, I simply beautiful. did not hear the you bell. Do Sorry for the late punches. And Warren was doing a great job of landing some uppercuts in that round. Look, in total control, he just got caught with a couple punches. And Doolittle hits hard when he's in there, and he's going to show it right here, I believe. Uppercut, uppercut, left hand, just overwhelming with hard shots right there. Just overwhelming. And that's exactly what happens when Doolittle can get in his rage. He's a power puncher, exactly like this. All it takes is that first punch. Once he knocks you off balance, he can continue to overwhelm. It's going to be hard to continue to grab your opponent like that. You can't move away from it. You got to close eyes. Obviously, a 10 8 round right there is going to put Isaac Doolittle in the lead here. Again, you see the sportsmanship Doolittle apologizing for the punches after the bell. For the line. Knuckle. Round three. I think both guys know what they have to do right now. Just getting a feel for the fight. Doolittle rushing in. Shots to the body. And they're going to let that go because he's continuing to land. Warren could actually lock up a guillotine to get to separation. Stop, stop, stop. Let's separate. See, clinching up over under. Right back to it. Yes, yes, yes. Little again coming forward. Warren's going to continue to try and land those up because if he times one of them and lands it properly, it could be big trouble for Doolittle, but very difficult to land that punch. I would like to see Warren focus on landing that punch to the body instead of trying to land it to the head. Chris, as you and I both thought, 10-8 across the board because of the knockdown. Absolutely. So one round apiece, but with that 10-8, you see Doolittle 
on all three Kansas judges scorecards. Again, those are official with real time scoring in Kansas. Big left hand from Warren. Do a little walked into that left hook. 45 seconds remaining, round number three. We thought it would be technical. We thought it would be tactical. It certainly is. These are two high level fighters. Good right hand in the left from Doolittle. Good left Ooh. right back from Warren. Through that naked. Starting to see a lot more of that, Chris, in Bare Knuckle. Good left hook. Didn't fully land. Turned the head of Doolittle, though. Starting to see those twos without the ones. Absolutely. If you could be faster than the opponent, if you could land that too, it's a beautiful punch. Overhand right, Doolittle taking himself off balance. The bell, the end of round three. Much closer round there, Sean. Both guys did very good things perfect. in that round. Perfect. Perfect execution. Hey, that was perfect execution. Jared, you good over That's here? what I wanted. Yeah. Sit down. That is what I wanted. All right? That's what we got to do. But I need you, when you're pulling out, you got to stay expecting the punches, my man. You hear me? Stay expecting the punches. Stay in the fight. Let me see. Where's the cup? Where's the cup? And there's Doolittle landing some good punches, pushing Warren back. Luckily for one, didn't look like neither one of those hurt him. I don't even know if that final left hand landed, but first one definitely landed. The hop steps there. You're gonna. We're up by two. You won that round too. I don't know fucking how. Interesting. Actually, Doolittle did not win that round on the majority, on the minority. So you see two of the three Kansas judges giving in to Jared Warren, one to Isaac Doolittle. Thus, the scores reflected. The fight ends right now, which obviously it's not going to because we're in round four, but it had it ended after round three, that's a majority draw. Now, Sean, is this a fight where they would actually make it go an extra round because it's a title eliminator? It is not on the table, Chris, in the state of Kansas. Okay. Yes! Yes! I'm shot, Dad! Gotta follow There's up. definitely some merit in doing that sixth overtime round. Well, in a situation like this, when you have a title eliminated fire, it's almost like you have to do that. Otherwise, who gets the title from it? Maybe they can grapple later. So, flip a coin, we'll see what happens. But, uh, Long way from finishing this world title eliminator, 185 pounds. Big right hand to the body from Warren. Warren again landing, turning Doolittle, straight left hand, Doolittle on the overhead right. 60 seconds remaining round four. To the inside, big uppercut from Isaac Doolittle. He's now exactly where he wants to be. Again, the double overhook from Jared Warren. He is so smart with that in this fight, getting out of the clinch. Absolutely, he's done a great job. What Doolittle thought he would be doing his best work, he's really not able to do right now. Doolittle continuing the throw, uppercut to the body from Warren as he's driven with his back against the ropes. 35 seconds to go round four. Doolittle with the hand free, continuing the throw. Tell for me, fellas, you're awkward. Ready? Separate! Quick restart from Nick Barron's good referee, keeping this fight flowing. Hands high and tight off the jab for Warren. Warren with the left hand. Roll under from Isaac Doolittle back to the inside. I feel like Warren's able to land some really good punches at this round. Spear of blood on the face of Jared Warren. Cut outside of his right brow. Step away, left hand from Warren. Lands just before the bell. We move to the fifth and final round. Warren's looking. Very tired of there, he's landing. Hey, Good punches on the board. Very difficult. Thing. All right. You heard him a couple times in that round, but I don't want you trying to force anything. All right. So it's the last round you can right here. create it though. If you can create it, if you can open it up, start looking him off. Start looking him off. Look to open it up. All right. Two judges got it yeah. So, I, two judges got it for you. So, you got to give me everything you got this round. I'll call out one minute, you hop step. How's that, Dempsey Roll? 
Good job. Uppercut, get that head off line. That uppercut, you gotta land it. Keep going, keep going left. Keep going, keep going to his like lead right, you know what I mean? So you're going left. This is the situation moving into the fifth and final round. The fighters know it, the corners know it. Two judges have it 38 37 Doolittle. One judge has it 38 37 Warren. This is exactly what real time scoring was meant to do. Have the full payoff, full awareness for the fighters in their corners in the final round of a fight. That way everybody knows. There's no questions. I love it. Driving pressure from Isaac Doolittle. Let's have a clean separation. The hard underhook from Jared Warren. Jared Warren has done a very good job of stopping the times right now. 30 seconds gone, fifth and final round of our co-mate. Nothing decided. Snap jab from Jared Warren. Recorded by Isaac Doolittle in round number two. Right now has him ahead in this fight. Make no mistake. That's a mathematical certainty. Tied up. Back to range, back to distance. Overhand right. Sean Rivers gonna be able to put a good streak together right here. Can pull this round out and in turn the fight really could decide what happens right here. Forward pressure from Jared Warren. 45 seconds remaining, fifth and final round. Reset from Isaac Doolittle. Doolittle tentative off the jab, looking for the entry. On the underhook, into the center circle. Quick break from Nick Barrett. Doolittle on the duck under. Left hook to the body by Jared Warren. Half time club, both fighters now throwing from the single collar tie. Stop for me, stop for me. 20 seconds remaining in our co -main. This last 20 seconds could decide it, so we're going to land the biggest punch right after witness. Right hand, oh, that left uppercut just missed from Warren. Threw that hard, good slip from Doolittle. Back into the clinch, both fighters continuing to throw. Short right hand, the bell, the end of our co-main event. So I don't know if that's going to be enough for Warren to be able to get that victory. Or at least the tie, I should say, the draw. Now the pad holders do not go to the corner after the final round of a fight under real-time scoring in Kansas. So now we have the full suspense. They will not know who wins until the three Kansas judges' scorecards are announced by Jeff Houston. See, you still get the suspense. It's perfect. See, we're picking off all the arguments against real-time scoring. And you could tell both guys just wanted it so bad right there, Sean. This was a very tough fight. So if this goes 10-9 for Warren, and again, I'm an F minus <laughs> math, or as my English wife would say, math. But I have it, Chris, if this goes 10-9 for Warren, this is a majority draw. Absolutely. We shall see. If it goes 10-9 for Isaac Doolittle, he gets the unanimous decision. Huge suspense now. Next stop for the winner, a world title fight at BKFC versus 185 pounds. Do it now, suspense, Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, after completing the scheduled five rounds, here are the score totals from our judges at ringside. Greg DeVilbus scores this fight 47-47, scoring the bout even. And Kevin Champion and Stephen Graham score the fight 48-46 in favor of your winner by majority decision. And he is now the new challenger for the BKFC World Light Heavyweight Championship. 
Basic, Honey Badger, Doolittle. And a hard fought majority decision win for Isaac Doolittle. Isaac Doolittle recording the lone knockdown of the fight. It came in round number two on that big left hand. Hard fought, well fought from both men. The winner by way of majority decision, Isaac Doolittle defeats Jared Warren. The world's most exciting combat sport, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship presents BKFC 38, Friday, April 21st. Watch as Daniel Strauss steps out of the cage and into the squared circle to fight skilled bare knuckle vet, Dat B Dat Win. Plus, see brutal Jake Boswick and Isaac the Honey Badger Doolittle throw down. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Watch it live on the BKFC app. Download it now at BKFC.com. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all new library of content, including behind the scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with a new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Crescent Tools presents our tale of the tape for this bout in the featherweight division. Howard Davis versus Josh Wright. I mean, and Sean, not only does the height jump off the page, but that reach, look at that, an 11, it's reach advantage for Howard Davis. We've seen both these guys fight. You know, Josh Wright wants to get inside and throw heavy hands, throw heavy punches. Howard's gonna have to keep his opponent at bay with those uppercuts and those jabs to try and get the victory. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. Howard Davis told us through his first two fights in bare knuckle, he was willing to take damage to land big punches. He said, now, not so much. It's risk and reward. I don't want to force. I want to rely more on counters. Full proper handshake before the bell. Round number one. Jamaican flag trucks for Howard Davis. White and black trucks for Josh Wright. Howard Davis definitely, ooh. And down on the left hook goes Josh Wright. Wow, that was fast. Great counter by Howard Davis. Wants to keep his opponent at bay with that jab, and he did better though. He landed that hook right there. Oh! And the counter right back, and down goes Howard Davis. And Sean, this is what I was looking for with this fight. Both these guys have power. Both these guys know how to utilize it. 40 seconds in. A knockdown apiece. You see the head movement from Josh Wright. He showed this ability when he fought Tom Schoff. He's gonna try to utilize it tonight. Stepping to the inside now is Josh Wright, 5'7", to Davis' 6'2". Right, right. Step back, please. Step back, please. Smart by Wright, he wanted to clinch, he wanted out, and now Cotton with the right hand! Cotton nearly down! Wright somehow keeping his feet, he was taking vicious right hands! Howard Davis has cut over that right eye. Credit to Josh Wright. He crouched, he bent his knees, he did not go down. Blood all over the back of Josh Wright, but it's Davis's blood from the cut outside of his right eye. Big left jab from Wright. Square into the face of Davis. Jabs can be so effective in bare knuckle. You saw it right there. Good right hand, another right hand lands from Josh Wright. Sean, we have a good fight going on right here. Absolutely, Chris. 15 seconds remaining, round number one. A round in which both fighters have been dropped. First right, then Davis. You heard the clack. Methodical now from right. Davis sitting back into the entry, into the clinch. The bell, the end of a really entertaining round one. Great respect between these two fighters. You saw the full handshake before the start of the fight. Big smile on the face of both men. It's the love of combat. There's such great camaraderie in BKFC. Fast start to round number two for Josh Wright. Immediately putting back Howard Davis. And Davis counters with the right hand. Turns right on loads of flurry. Again, the deep crouch from Wright, but he does not go down. He went so low right there. I thought he was going to hit the ground. Just as we saw in round number one. 
90 seconds remaining, round two. There's that shovel left hook from Howard Davis. It's nearly identical to the punch that dropped right at the start of this fight. Long jab, jab to the body from right to counter. Tim will roll unders from Josh Wright. Looking for the entry, big overhand right, another overhand right from Howard Davis. I think Josh Wright is incapable of a boring fight. <laughs> you know, Sean, before this fight, I didn't know if Howard Davis had the ability to beat the nail as well as the hammer. He definitely does. Heavy pressure now from Josh Wright on the left. Andrew Glenn is saying that's not a knockdown. Davis was appealing for it. He's still appealing for it. No knockdown, says referee Andrew Glenn. Right back to it. Well, his knee definitely hit the ground, but I don't know if it was from a punch. That sounded bad. Full right hand on loads from Davis. Right throwing back with the right hand back into the clinch. Not enough activity for Andrew Glenn. Quick separation. 20 seconds to go round two. This is a very fun fight. Naked right hand by right. Another right hand into the clinch. Underhook by right. Again, he has nine fights of pro MMA experience. Davis has never trained, let alone fought MMA. Look for that in the clinch. The bell. Smile on the face of both men. They are having a lot of fun. We move to round three. Round number three. Great second look replay. Our producer, director, Jonathan Evans, outstanding crew. Even when Howard tries to do the right thing. That's a slip. Even no, Howard Tate no, no, just no, yelled no, what to no, Andrew Glenn. Even when Howard's doing the right thing and trying to utilize that jab. Josh Wright is so hard to jab. He ducks under so fast and comes back with punches. That head movement. Vicious right there, the way he does it. Howard Davis has recorded one knockdown. He's appealed for two more. I believe Andrew Glenn correct in saying both were slips. Right coming forward. There's a good right hand by Davis. Davis, another right hand. I feel like Davis is really starting to step it up this round. The fighter's doing extremely well in this fight. Very even. Step away right hand by Davis. Right coming forward off of the jab. 60 seconds to go round three. Long jab from Howard Davis. Jab just off the mark. See the continual head movement, the shoulder rolls from Josh Wright. Earlier he was being able to come back with punches right afterwards. Now he's staying back and just dodge, and that's when he, he has to throw punches out of there. Right hand to the left hand, another right hand by Wright, putting Davis's back against the ropes now into the clinch. Davis doing a good job of dunking underneath some of these punches of right as well. Soft warning by referee Andrew Glenn to right, punching to the back of Davis's head. It's the soft warning, just making right aware. 20 seconds to go round three. Jab again from Davis, playing off of the one. Again, that long sharpshooter jab. Big right hand wow. on the delay, and down goes Josh Wright. That was a clean shot. I don't know if he's getting up. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Final seconds of round three. There's the bell. The count continues to ten. Game, set, match. Howard Davis. What a fight right there. You have to love it when you have a guy get him off the canvas. That answered a lot of questions about Howard Davis right there. This guy can do the hammer, the nail. He can do it all. He got stronger as the fight went on. That was the best looking round he had right there. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Andrew Glenn, reaches the count of 10 at the conclusion of round number three. For your winner by KO, Howard H.D. Davis. Sean, what a fight for Howard Davis right there, showing how much of a force he's going to be, how difficult he's going to be to deal with in this division. You see the class from both men. That was a first-class performance indeed from both men. These two 145-pounders going all out. One knockdown apiece in round number one, and a vicious overhand right to the finish for Howard Davis. The winner by way of third-round knockout, Howard Davis defeats Josh Wright. 
the world's most exciting combat sport, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship presents BKFC 38, Friday, April 21st. Watch as Daniel Strauss steps out of the cage and into the squared circle to fight skilled bare knuckle vet, Dat B. Dat Win. Plus, see brutal Jake Boswick and Isaac the Honey Badger Doolittle throw down. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Watch it live on the BKFC app. Download it now at BKFC.com. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all new library of content, including behind the scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with a new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. The Fighting Championship is brought to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. There's no mistaking the spectacular guitar here in Hollywood, Florida, the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. 
BKFC is back in South Florida with yet another massive night of bare knuckle fights. The competition begins with our free view. That's three bare knuckle fights at no cost to you, and they will set the tone for the entire night here at the Hard Rock Live. Our co-main event features two middleweights looking for their opportunity at a title shot. Guaranteed banger between Jake Bostwick and Isaac Doolittle. And our main event, former bantamweight king Dap B. Dap Win makes his long-awaited return against the new blood in the BKFC, former MMA world champion Daniel Strauss. Welcome to the Hard Rock Live and welcome to BKFC. 38 tonight we have 11 hard nose fights and if you have ever watched bkfc before you know that it can be from the free view all the way to the main event where it can steal the entire show that's how much we love the product and then you're in for a treat tonight here in south florida that being said folks you're in the free view right now so if you want to be a part of the whole night including that co-main event main event you got to pay 7.99 to get the bkfc app they're going to get tonight's event and you're going to get tomorrow in Leeds, BKFC 40, Leeds UK, Holmes and Chrissy, light heavyweight bout on top of the card. Going to be a cracker, as they say over in the UK. Back to back, bare knuckle fighting. Doesn't get much better than that. That being said, let's check in with our all star commentary crew. We got Sean Wheelock, we got Chris Lytle. Cyrus, thank you very much. So coming into our main event, this is really intriguing. That win came to BKFC after a really good run as a pro boxer. 20 victories against three losses. He's been outstanding in BKFC. That win, the former BKFC 135 pound world champion. Daniel Strauss, tonight is his bare knuckle debut. Chris, he comes straight from MMA, an A-list MMA career. Twice he was the Bellator 145 pound world champion. Fantastic champ right there. Fought the who's who in that division. You know, Dad been fantastic. Can't wait to see this guy get back. I've been waiting for him to come back. This is the night he's ready to go. Looking fantastic, Sean. Well, Chris, you know what I'm going to ask you? <laughs> Pull up the odds. Let's take a look at where it lands. If people want to make things interesting, what should they pony up on tonight? I mean, if you're paying attention, there's a lot of money to be made right here. A lot of good fights. The thing that jumps out at me, Isaac Doolittle, minus 125. He was so close to winning that title versus Richmond. I mean, you have to like his chances in this fight. Now, folks, if you are going to play, you can earn a $50 bonus bet on tonight's card with your first deposit of $5 or more on DraftKings Sportsbook. Scan the QR code, enter the code BKFC38 to play now. And now let's take a look at the official rules for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. All fights get up for five two-minute rounds. Fights are scored by three judges on a 10-point must system. Hand wraps must be at least one inch below the bare knuckles. Punching in the clinch is allowed. No three knockdown rule. No being saved by the bell in any round. No kicks, knees, elbows, takedowns, or submissions. With that being said, let's go to our first fight of the night in the Crescent Tools. Tail the tape. We will open in the bantamweight division. Chris Garcia versus Ryan Carroll. You can see here, Sean, they have a three-inch reach advantage. For Garcia, he's going to utilize that. Carroll's going to have to get inside to land those punches. Garcia wants to keep him on the outside. This is the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship debut for Ryan Carroll. He's had six pro MMA bouts, five in pro boxing, one in pro kickboxing. Carroll holds the rank of black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And he told us in our fighter meeting that in training for this, his Bare Knuckle Fighting debut, he is really going to his grappling and Jiu-Jitsu roots, putting a big focus on the clinch. Absolutely, Sean. Wants to do what he does well, get inside, use that clinch, wear his opponent down. Figures he does not want to stay in the pocket for this fight. All the way in, all the way out. Stay outside. When he gets inside, grab where his opponent down, throw punches from that position. Ryan Carroll said of his opponent in this bantamweight bout, 23-year-old Chris Garcia, 
I expect a lot of nervous energy, Carol said of Garcia, because Garcia will be making his Pro Combat Sports debut. I have to be aware of Garcia's wild swings off the scratch line. And that's the thing, he wants to study his opponent, capitalize on his mistakes, wait for him to make these wild shots, and then counter and capitalize. And the moment is at hand for Chris Garcia. Pro Combat Sports debut with this bout. And of course, that means his debut in BKFC as well. Garcia, very good amateur boxer. Eight wins and 10 bouts as an amateur in boxing. Garcia told us in our fighter meeting, he feels that he is very physically strong for this weight class. Garcia said, coming from boxing, I really have not had much experience in the clinch. I know it's huge in bare knuckle, so that's been a big focus in my training camp. He figures from his style, he's very aggressive. He likes to put forth a lot of pressure, but at the same time, he wants to counter strike. So maybe put forth a lot of forward movement, wait for his opponent to punch, and then counter right after that. To get our evening started, we send it into the ring with Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to Hard Rock Live here at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino here in beautiful Hollywood, Florida. And welcome to BKFC 38. We are set for our BKFC freeview with five two-minute rounds in the bantamweight division, presented to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Introducing you first, fighting out the red corner tonight. He wears black and red. He stands five feet eight inches tall. His official weight, 128 and one half pounds. He holds a combined combat sports record of 12 fights, and tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Parkersburg, West Virginia, here is Ryan Carroll. And across the ring, his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears blue and red, trimmed in black and white. He stands 5 feet 8 inches tall. His official weight, 129 and 1 half pounds. Tonight, he makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Clewiston, Florida, here is Chris Dynamite Garcia. And our referee in charge of the action, Sam Burgos. All right, gentlemen. Go on, go on. Told us that he wants to fight in the clinch. The line, Chris Garcia told us that he wants to fight in the mid-range. Both fighters up to scratch. No, no, no. Call of knuckle up from the excellent referee Sam Burgos. Round number one. Blue and white trunks for Chris Garcia. Black and red trunks for Ryan Carroll. Step forward with the one two goes Ryan Carroll. Carroll on the overhand right. Another one two right back from Garcia. See the open chested stance, the lateral movement of Ryan Carroll, the upper body movement of Ryan Carroll. There's that switch of stance right there from Carroll. Try to confuse his opponent. Never give him the same look. Counter on the right hand from Garcia. Stiff jab from Chris Garcia. See that big smile from Gar Carroll as he took the right hand now into the clinch and this is exactly where Ryan Carroll told us that he wants to be. All the break from Sam Burgos right back to it. Garcia trying to enter his preferred mid-range. 110 remaining, round number one of this bantamweight fight. And you can just see the awkward punches coming from Carroll, not at typical angles from boxing. Garcia might have a little bit of problem with these, but if he can figure out the timing and, and capitalize on those wild punches, it could be good for Garcia. So the overhand right into the clinch, nearly the takedown from Ryan Carroll. Obviously illegal under this rule set into the ropes. Call break again from Burgos, right back to it with 45 seconds remaining round number one. Good right hand on the turn from the body, right hand to the head from Chris Garcia. Great body being done by Garcia right there as well. Really working the bottom of Carroll. Working that body right in there with those good right hands. Tight overhook from Ryan Carroll into the ropes. Reset again. Garcia's looked very on point with his jab thus far in the fight. There's the jab again from Chris Garcia. Lead left hook, not there for Carroll. Stiff jab from Ryan Carroll. Jab right back from Garcia. See the feint on the level change from Chris Garcia on the walk down pressure. Closed, lead left hook from Carroll. Been the best weapon right now for Garcia is that jab. 
Final seconds, round number one. Entertaining opening round, or opening bout BKFC 38 here in Hollywood, Florida. We move to round two. And Sean, it's so typical in boxing that the jab can't control the pace of a fight, the pace of a round, especially in bare knuckle, because it doesn't take much. If you hit somebody with a bare knuckle, even if it's jab, it can do damage. That round right there, we saw that was the key weapon for Garcia. That was the main thing he landed. He landed a couple of the punches in there, but it was that jab. And, and Carroll's gonna have to figure out how to deal with that. He's got to slip it and come back with his own punches. Stay out of that, that range where the jab can land. Here's a couple jabs right there. There's a good right. And here's that good body work being done right there by Garcia. Anything like that where you have the hands up and just clean shots on the body does a lot of damage. We talked about it before, Sean, that bare knuckle digs in deep. You don't have that, that glove to disperse the, the paint right there. It all digs in deep. Both fighters back up to scratch, round number two. Fast start off of the scratch line here in the second round for Ryan Carroll off the jab. There's the jab right back from Chris Garcia. Heavy walk down pressure from Carroll. You can see Carroll has a different sense of urgency right now. He's throwing his opponent around, trying to. Trying to get in and throw hard punches. Soft warning from referee Sam Burgos to Ryan Carroll. Excessive holding. Well, Carroll's got to be true to his word. He has to be all the way in or all the way out. He doesn't want to stand right here in jab range. That's not where he's going to excel in this fight. Garcia said as much in our fighter meeting. He said, I don't want to get stuck on the outside. I don't want to get stuck in the clinch. I want to settle into the mid range. The fight is very clear right on their strategy coming in. There's a good right hand to the body from Garcia. Swing and a miss, lead left hook from Ryan Carroll. Carroll into the clinch, trying to snatch the full tie club. You see the patience of Sam Burgos on the full tie club, now the underhook for Ryan Carroll. Well, the problem with that full tie plum right there is you can't punch your opponent. You can pull the head down, but you have to get it down. Counter right hand, and that drops Ryan Carroll. Ryan Carroll up at eight, his corner imploring him, you've got to get up. And he looked at his corner pretty hard there. He looked like he didn't really want to, but he was told to by the corner. Hands up, wide open. Interesting from Ryan Carroll. Taking the knockdown, open chested, hands splayed. The only thing I can think right now, Sean, he's trying to get his opponent to open up, trying to commit so he can counter with a hard shot. 23-year-old Chris Garcia and his BKFC and indeed pro combat sports debut in this bout. Looking very composed, very poised. Left hand from Garcia. Big right to the body, another right hand to the body. Impressive flurry to the body from Garcia. More posturing from Carroll. Final seconds, round number two. There's the jab from Carroll. There is the bell. And Sean, those body shots do a lot of damage right there. Great job by Garcia. If you can continue to work that body, that's going to slow your opponent down and make him question why he's even in there. Big round for Garcia. You can see Garcia in a good spot right there. You can, look at that, just dig into the body. And that was what did the damage, Sean. Look at, look at Carroll right there. He, look at that look on his face. That was caused by that body shot. Looking at his corner, talking right now, the corner saying, you have to get up. He's thinking, Ugh, do I really have to? Carroll's corner just to the right of our commentary position, and we can hear them clearly. Ignoring Ryan Carroll. Blue, mouthpiece, red, mouthpiece. Follow the line, gentlemen. Set for round number three. Carroll's gonna have to do what he talks about, either stay outside or get inside. Fight his way inside, throw, come behind that jab, throw hard punches, work the clinch. Even when he's clinching, he's not been throwing many punches in there. One, two from Garcia, getting the lead left hook for Carroll, but not there. Carroll now steps back, takes the knee, knockdown number two. He's yeah. taking a hard look right there and saying, do I want to get up Seven. right here? Look. Eight. Yeah. He does not beat the count, and that is the win in his BKFC and Pro Combat Sports debut for Chris Garcia. Yeah. Man. Garcia looked fantastic out there, calm, collected. Stayed behind the jab, waited for openings, worked the body. Very good debut. Are you good? Go back to your corner. 
poised throughout from Chris Garcia. Ryan Carroll stepped back, took the knee, tried to buy time, but then decided that he did not want to get up. Well, and, and Sean, I think that was just from all that body work that was being done. People don't understand with no gloves, those little body shots do so much damage right there. It makes you question everything. You get hit with one that might have not looked that painful, but it is, trust me. The look on Ryan Carroll's face as he was taking the count from Sam Burgos, you could almost see the inner turmoil. Do I continue? Do I stay down? Yeah. Carroll and, and, ultimately getting up at nine and a half. That was not good <laughs> enough for Sam Burgos. That's the end of the fight. I think the referee saw the ride on the wall. He's like, what good is this going to do? Let this fight go on. He doesn't want to be here. He's doing this out of pride, not because he thinks he can win the fight. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Sam Burgos, reaches the count of 10 at 27 seconds into round number three. For your winner by KO, Chris Dynamite Garcia. And Sean, I am very excited to see Garcia fight again for the debut. He looked fantastic, so relaxed, so sure of what he wanted to do, had a game plan, and went out there and executed. So rare for your debut. Ryan Carroll threw big shots, pulled himself off of the canvas in round number two, took the knee, took the count to the end in round number three. Again, class throughout from 23-year-old Chris Garcia, an outstanding BKFC and pro combat sports debut. Victorious by way of third round knockout, Chris Garcia defeats Ryan Carroll. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all new library of content, including behind the scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Let's go! Tonight only, you'll receive a free gift with any purchase of $25 or more at BareKnuckleShop.com. Check out the huge selection of merch to choose from, the sizes and styles for everyone. You can place your order now at BareKnuckleShop.com. And again, a reminder, if you spend $25 or more, you'll receive a free gift. So knuckle up at BareKnuckleShop.com. Once again, the BKFC has descended upon South Florida. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship is brought to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Only fans. Crescent Tools. And Lions Not Sheep Apparel. Tools brings you our tale of the tape for this bout in the featherweight division. Freddie Masabo versus Bovar Hanakul. And Sean, you can see here everything fairly similar. Slight reach advantage for Masabo. He does have a four centimeter bigger fist size. See if that makes a difference. All he has to do is land those big fists on his opponent's head that give them a little more surface there. Let's see if that makes a difference here. Draped in the flag of his native Ukraine, Bovar Honokov, extremely proud to represent his home nation as the first Ukrainian in BKFC. This is bare knuckle bout number five for Honokov, but his promotional BKFC debut, Bovar Honokov has also had three pro boxing bouts. In our fighter meeting, Honokov said, my style is to blend together street fighting and technical fighting. I love it when he said that, Sean. He says he feels like he has big power in both hands. Nothing, he really wants to be entertaining out here. He wants to put on a show for the crowd, be adaptable out there, change, do whatever he needs to do to get the victory. Bovar Honokov had the quote of the week in our fighter meetings. He said, the price that Freddie Masabo will pay for making a mistake against me is health. <laughs> I love that too. 
has a good strategy here, said he wants to start off slow, get the understanding of what his opponents do, download, and then turn up the pressure as the fight goes on. Freddie Masabo, 2-0 in BKFC. His debut came in June of last year when he defeated Will Shutt by second round KO. And Will Shutt, always a tough night out there. He's gonna come the entire time and bring it, but Masabo was just all over him. You can see right here, just accurate punches right there, punching hard. He feels like he's one of the heavy-handed guys in this division and watching his fights. I'd have to agree with him, man. Just look at these. Good movement right there. And look at that, just a nice straight right. You don't see Will Shutt getting knocked down with shots like that. Just a good straight right hand, but he disguised it well. He moved in and out. He's getting more and more comfortable out here. He yeah. feels very confident in his ability to fight in this division. Draped in the flag of his native Cuba, now based here in South Florida, Freddie Masabo. 2-0 in BKFC, 4-0-1 in his pro MMA career. Masabo was a longtime member of Cuba's national boxing team. He compiled 308 amateur boxing bouts. Sean, that is unreal. That's one thing he wants to do here. He wants to showcase clean striking, clean boxing. He feels like he's more technical and more powerful than anybody he's going to face. Masaba also told us he prides himself on being an extremely smart fighter. He said to Bovar Honokov, his opponent in this featherweight bout, I'm going to start by targeting his eyes. I will close his eyes, then work to his body, and then methodically work for the finish. Going to use some hard feints to make his opponent bite, but like you talked about, he, he wants to utilize that jab, but he feels like a KO is definitely necessary in this fight. In our fighter meeting, when we asked Freddie Masabo, what does Bovar Honokov do well? He said he's very durable, but he will need that against me. He will have to be durable because I will take him out. You gotta love the confidence. Both these guys, you can tell at the weigh-ins. Not that there's any bad blood, but both these guys are fired up to be in here. They both feel like they're the A side, and that's what you gotta like in a fight, Sean. Both guys are ultra confident they're gonna win. This is a really intriguing bout in the featherweight division. To get it started, back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Presented to you by Lions Not Sheep Apparel. Introducing you first, fighting out the red corner. Tonight he wears the proud colors of Ukraine. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall. His official weight, an even 145 pounds. Tonight, he makes his BKFC debut ready for bare knuckle fight number five. Fighting out of Manipur, Donetsk Oblast, Ukraine. Here is Bovar, the gladiator. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears pink trimmed in light blue and white. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall. His official weight, 145.4 pounds. He holds an undefeated BKFC record at 2-0. Fighting out of Santiago de Cuba, Los Pinos. Here is the undefeated Freddy Spider-Man. Masalo! And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. Bovar Honokov said of his of his opponent in this featherweight bout, Freddy Masabo, he's fast, he's long, but he does not understand how to use reach and range. That's where I will exploit him. Round number one. White and pink trunks for the Cuban Freddy Masabo. Blue and yellow trunks for the Ukrainian Bovar Honokov. Honokov with a jab to the body. Immediately, you see the fluidity of both fighters. And Sean, we were really excited about this fight for a reason. These guys look very good so far. Sabo from the southpaw stance, now switching orthodox. Right hand just misses from the ortho stance for Honokov. Sabo staying outside, missing with that right hand. Finder jab from Masabo, now playing to the crowd. Honokov coming forward undeterred. One 
15 remaining, round number one. Slight walk down pressure from Bovar Honokov. Hand left misses from Honokov. Honokov pulling back that right hand. Very muted, measured start for Freddy Masabo. Two feints on the jab for the Cuban Masabo. Masabo said he was going to use some feints. He's doing it, but it's not really. Bovar's not giving him much from those feints. On the cove, as you see, slowly trying to walk down Masabo, trying to cut this circular ring. I do like the pressure right now from Bobo. He's, he's staying right in front, just mirroring the hips. Masabo just waiting for the right time to explode in. To the head to the body, counter left and the right from Masabo. On the cove resetting in the mid range. Green and on the cove off the jab. Closing seconds, round number one. Left hand not there for Honokov. Next stop, round two. And Sean, that was a tough run of school because there was just a lot of setups, a lot of movement right there, not a lot of punches thrown or landed. Both these guys, you could tell how high level they both are. One mistake could be the end of the fight, and both guys know it, so they're being very careful right now. Tonight's judges are signed by the Outstanding Florida Athletic Commission, headed by Patrick Cunningham and Tim Shipman. Be interesting to see how both guys adjust right here. Masabo's gonna have to do something because Bovar just continued to stalk, put pressure on him right there. Wasn't able to land much, but Masabo's gonna have to start doing something to not just move the entire time and start to get offensive himself. The fighter's a little too keen. Backed up by Andrew Glenn. Now round number two. Jab immediately from Masabo. Honokov on the outside, circling. Jab from Honokov. Left hook just misses from Bovar Honokov. Jab to the body, just off the mark from Freddy Masaba. There's the jab from Honokov. Overhand left from Masabo. Masabo again playing to the crowd. Honokov completely stoic, undeterred. Good body shot thrown there by Bovar. And you can see Bovar's wanting to target the body right now. Slow his opponent down a little bit, I like it. There's the right hand to the body from Honokov off the jab to the head. This is the first time now in three BKFC bouts that we've seen Freddy Masabo really play defense. Through previous bouts, he's been straightforward offensive pressure. Right hand misses from Masabo to the inside. See the body work, downward punches from Masabo. Now the turn into the clinch. Gable grip, that draws the separation from Andrew Glenn. Now telling Masabo, break when I say break. Soft warning from Glenn. And look at this pressure Bobar's is putting on. Nice. Good one, two left hook from Honokov. Check left hook from Bovar Honokov. Honokov now mirroring the hips of Freddy Masabo. Great job right there. Just everywhere Masabo goes, Bovar's right there to throw punches. Overhand right, counter left hand. Honokov relentless, taking away time, taking away space from Freddy Masabo. Closing seconds, round number two, there is the bell. Masabo is just on his bike the entire time, trying to stay away from Bovo, who's just continuing to put pressure on. Masabo's gonna have to figure out a way to get in there, land punches. You cannot just continue to move the entire time with someone like Bobo just continues to mirror your hips, wait for the right time, explode in with body punches. Sabo needs to start getting off first, but when he does, it seems like Bobar just continues to throw punches right back. You see that cut? Outside of both our Honokov's left brow. And that's a pretty, pretty good cut right there. Worked on by one of our outstanding BKFC cut men, Pat McPherson. 
Confirmation round number three is upon us. We're in the 145 pound division. Freddy Masabo, the Cuban, versus the Ukrainian Bovar Honokov. Comes up twice. It's scratched from Honokov. Now round number three. Here's the jab from Masabo. Jab to the body from Honokov. Left hook from Freddy Masabo. One, two. One, two right back from Masabo. It's like Masabo coming forward a little bit more this round. I think he might have a little bit of sense of urgency right now. He might feel like he lost the first two rounds. He has to do something different. Monokov just relentless, taking away time, taking away space, cutting distance and angles to this point in the fight. He's fighting when he wants to fight, not his opponent. And that's how you win a lot of close fights. If you decide, dictate when and where the fight happens. Now stepping into the pocket, counter left hand on the exit for Masabo. Undeterred Honokov coming back forward into the mid range. Now Honokov clowning, folding his arms. Trying to make his opponent fight him, I love it. You're just gonna run, no, I'm just gonna make you come fight me. Hand behind the back. And shades of Conor McGregor, I've never seen the arms folded. That's ignited this very pro Freddy Masabo South Florida crowd. Markov to the body, right hand, left hand. And Sean, I'm not a believer that you win rounds by running and not, not landing hard shots. 30 seconds remaining round three. Sabo on his back foot. That's a good entry left hand from Onokov. Onokov again clowning. Hands behind the back. Fast jab from Bovar Onokov. He's got one hand behind his back, arms folded. And then as you just saw, very Conor McGregor ass, both hands behind his back. Overhand right from Masabo. Left hook knocked through. We move to round four. And you can just see the confidence right now, Bovar. Look what he's doing right here, putting one hand behind the back, saying, come fight me, quit running, quit moving. Chris, I have Fold. never seen arms folded. I like it. Like he's saying, you're not fighting me. I'm tired of chasing you down. Step in the middle and fight me. Not as a commentator, not as a fan. I started watching boxing when I was five years old. I started watching MMA with UFC 1 live November 12, 1993. I have never seen that. <laughs> have you? Not that I can think of, no, but uh, I like seeing it. So we'll see. I mean, I think it's going to have the desired effect he's going to make. And, and even if not, if he doesn't make Freddie step forward, the judges, the fans, everybody seeing that. And to me, you're winning the fight. When you make a guy back up and run the entire time and you stand in the middle and say, fight me, and they don't, you win the fight. Now that Round we've four. seen it, everyone's Never going out. to do it. <laughs> this is the nature of hey, combat sports. That's fine. If it makes people fight, let's do it. So Freddie Masabo's going to have to do something different right here. Round number four. Jab to the body from Freddie Masabo. Masabo's starting to come with some good body shots right here. I think he has a little bit more. I thought he might have a sense of urgency after the first two rounds, but he, he better develop it right now because I feel like he's lost all three rounds. There's the up jab from the Ukrainian Bovar Honokov. Sabo again, trying to ignite this crowd. I mean, he's trying to ignite the crowd, but he's not doing it with a lot of punches. He's trying to, that was a couple of good punches right there. Overhand right on the entry from the Cuban, Freddy Masabo. Overhand right again. Honokov reclaiming center circle. Now Masabo waving Honokov forward. Jab to the body from Bovar Honokov. Overhand right. 60 seconds remaining, round four. Shuffle step from Masabo. Onokov off the 1-1-2. One, one, Jab to the body from Bovar Honokov. Jabs to the body by and large now. Serious clowning, hands on the ropes. Just put his own back against the ropes and then put his hands on the ropes and give him a free shot. Oh, nice Good body. right hook to the body from Honokov. Chris, 
As you and I know, in this modern revival of bare knuckle fighting, jabs to the body are largely ineffective. With that being said, Onokov's jab to the Masabo body has been really effective in this fight. Even if the jab might be that right hand was definitely not ineffective. Jab to the body from Masabo. This is clowning at an entirely new level from Bovar Honokov. And, and, and he's not really doing it. He's doing it because he has to. I mean, that's the way the fight is played out. That's the way Freddy Masabo's making this fight happen. That is the end of round four. And look, who puts their own back on the ropes and put your hands up on the ropes and they go ahead and hit me, go ahead and try. And doesn't get hit. That, this is some very high level defense and offense right now from Bovar. Chris, all of the fights that I've done in Eastern Europe when I was in M1 in my two stints, M1 Global MMA, by and large, there's really no concept with Eastern Europeans of trash talking, of clowning. It's all business. The translators that we would usually have would call the fighters sportsmen, and they really meant it on that translation. So I'm surprised to see this. I'm even more surprised to see this from the Ukrainian Bovar Honokov. It doesn't feel like taunting. It, though, feels well, like he's trying to get Masabo to engage. Sean, he said he wants to be an entertainer. He is being entertaining right now, but at the same time, he's trying to make his opponent fight him. I don't think he's doing this to be a showboat. He's doing it to make his opponent come forward and to show the judges, I'm winning this fight. Fifth and final round. Freddy Masabo enters 2-0 and in BKFC. Bovar Honokov, the first Ukrainian in Bare Knuckle Fighting hey, Championship hey. in his promotional debut, his fifth ever Bare Knuckle Stop. Fighting bout. Now peace out. Now peace right back in. And Freddy Masabo better do something a little different right now. I, I'd have to think he's down the scorecards. I think he knows it. He keeps wanting the crowd to get into it, but... Left hook from Masabo, not there. Took to the body from Freddy Masabo. This has really been methodical excellence from Bovar Honokov. Just stalking his opponent down, waiting for the right time, doing good work, but not getting greedy, not staying in there for the return punch to come. Some fans will love the clowning, other fans will despise the clowning, but Honokov doesn't seem to be mean-spirited in that, as you often see with clowning. Again, it almost seems to get Masabo to try to engage. Exactly what it is. He wants a fight. He's not really getting right now. Great work right there. One, that two, then a punch to the body. Naked two from Masabo, not there. 50 seconds remaining, fifth and final round. Shuffle step now from Honokov. Off the jab hook to the body. That right hook to the body now really there for Bovar Honokov. Honokov opening up to the body of Freddy Masabo. Masabo sticking his chin out. And Honokov looking to the body. Just great body work being done the entire fight. Look at right that. Right hook, left hook. 20 seconds remaining in this fight. Masabo continuing to stay defensive, continuing to stay on the outside. Just heard the 10 second clack. Stretch drive now. Flurry from Bovar Honokov. The volume is there for Honokov. The accuracy, the pressure, and that's the end of the fight. Great job done there. Both guys, but I mean, especially Bovar, just look fantastic. That's a fantastic show of respect between two really respectful first class fighters. First class fighters, first class people. Freddy Masabo, Bovar Honokov going the distance. You see the class, both fighters continuing visiting the respective opponent's corner. No open scoring here in Florida, so we are not privy to the three Florida judges' scorecards. Assume nothing in combat sports judging. With all of that said, that's one of the most impressive BKFC debuts we've ever seen. Bovar Honokov was on point, and he got better and better as the fight progressed. And, Sean, sometimes you see a guy come out in their debut, and they look fantastic. Great knockout, great whatever, just uh, even if it's a full distance, but... This wasn't against Freddy Masabo, who's been one of our better guys. So to come out there and have a performance like that against another very high-level fighter, that's what's so impressive to me. That's why when you say it might be one of the best debuts we've seen, I agree with you. Again, Freddy Masabo entering 2-0 in BKFC, 308 amateur bouts, and a longtime member of the Cuban national boxing team.
The tallying of the three Florida judges has commenced. Jeff Houston is in the ring. We send it to Jeff now. Ladies and gentlemen, after completing the scheduled five rounds, here are the score totals from our judges at ringside. Judges Rupert and Toledo score the fight 49-46. Judge Rodriguez, 48-47. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. Bovar, the gladiator, Monaco! Sean, we've already talked about it. One of the most impressive debuts we've seen. I cannot wait to see. He's going to be a force in this weight class, you have to think, because just the calmness, the execution, he did everything very well there. I just cannot wait to see this guy progress in this weight class. That's a fantastic moment, the exchange of the flags. There was definite clowning, but you see all respect. Freddie Masabo could not get his offense going because of the positional pressure dominance of Bovar Honokov, who is on point, mirroring the hips, landing to the body, dictating the entire fight, and some first-class clowning as well. The winner, by way of unanimous decision, Bovar Honokov defeats Freddie Masabo. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all new library of content, including behind the scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Tonight only, you'll receive a free gift with any purchase of $25 or more at BareKnuckleShop.com. Check out the huge selection of merch to choose from, the sizes and styles for everyone. You can place your order now at BareKnuckleShop.com. And again, a reminder, if you spend $25 or more, you'll receive a free gift. So knuckle up at BareKnuckleShop.com. And Sean, not only the height difference that jumps up, but that reach advantage. You have a huge reach advantage for Howard Davis. Trevor Morris has to get inside and land those punches. Howard Davis, really good at using his range. He's gonna wanna stay on the outside. Pot shot, land good hard one twos and keep Trevor Morris away from him. This is the BKFC and Pro Combat Sports debut for Trevor Morris. 16 and four is an Ami in MMA. Morris four and zero in amateur Muay Thai. In our fighter meeting, Trevor Morris said, "I want to be very aggressive, establish myself in the pocket, throw in the pocket, work to the clinch, in the clinch, be very, very heavy on the inside throughout." Exactly wants to get inside, feels like he's a pocket fighter, but heavy on that clinch, pushing his opponent around, wearing him out. He knows he's dealing with a big, strong individual. He feels like the more inside he get, push him around, slow him down a little bit for those later rounds. You see in the corner of Trevor Morris, one of my favorite people in all of MMA from the UFC, Boston Strong, Charles Rosa. Before the fight in the ring, Rosa was working extensively with Morris. They were working on level changes. They were working on angle changes. Morris knows he needs to get 
constant pressure right here if he wants to win this fight has to get in fight at all ranks but really wants to get inside push his opponent around use that pressure to wear him down Howard Davis enters 2-1-1 one one, promotionally in BKFC, 3-1-1 one one overall in the sport of bare knuckle fighting. Davis 1-0 in pro boxing. Howard Davis was 15-2 as an amateur boxer. Davis said, now through five total bare knuckle fighting bouts, he said, I no longer have the mentality where I just want to come forward, take big shots to land big shots. Davis said, I understand the nuances better, the complexities of bare knuckle fighting. I want to use my reach, use my length, fight smarter, fight more technically on the outside. He feels like he needs to be calmer in the fight. Like you said, he doesn't want to chase his prey. I love that he's got to be patient. Never wants to trade. Be smart out there and showcase his skills. Howard Davis also told us in our fighter meeting, I need to avoid the clinch, stay long. I feel that Trevor Morris is going to quickly try to rush in off of scratch and brawl. I need to be smart, control with my jab. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Presented to you by Crescent Tools. Introducing you first. Fighting out of the red corner, tonight he wears black. He stands five feet, nine inches tall. His official weight, 149.1 pounds. Tonight, he makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Knoxville, Tennessee, here is Tragic Trevor Morris. And across the ring, his opponent, Fighting out of the blue corner, tonight he wears white trimmed in teal and orange. He stands six feet two inches tall. His official weight, 152.9 pounds. His BKFC record stands at three victories opposite a single defeat with one fight even. Fighting out of Broward County, Florida, here is Howard H.D. Davis. And our referee in charge of the action, Chris Young. Trevor Morris said of Howard Davis, his opponent in this lightweight bout, Davis uses his range well, but he struggles when he is pushed backwards. I will immediately push him backwards. Round number one, immediate forward pressure from Trevor Morris. He's in the black trunks. White trunks for Howard Davis. And you can tell right now Howard Davis, he's just waiting to counter. Stiff jab from Davis from range. He talked about that jab being the key, making his opponent pay every time. Morse missing with the overhand right. Morse missing with that lead left hook. Davis trying to stay long. On the inside, right back out. Switch of angles now for Davis. Forward pressure from Trevor Morris. Morris trying to solve that long Howard Davis jab to get to the inside. Jab from Trevor Morris. Morris doing a nice job of mirroring the hips of Howard Davis. Overhand right just off the mark, but that definitely took Davis laterally and off his striking line. Step in right hand, not there for Davis. I like him throwing the two right there, though. You gotta let your opponent know it's not gonna be the jab every time. If he can have to look for both hands, it's a big difference. That jab landed hard. Morris pointed to his forehead. Saying in effect to Davis, keep them coming. Davis obliges with that hard one. <laughs> the jab right back. 35 seconds remaining, round number one. Look jab that time from Howard Davis. Overhand right, chest off the mark from Morris. Morris showing a willingness to try to walk through that jab of Davis, get to the inside. To the inside, now the comes Trevor Morris the into the clinch. We'll see the patience of referee Chris Young. There's the answer. Inactivity for both fighters, the separation. Well, they, referee they from they Young right back to it. Howard Davis wasn't trying to throw anything in there. He just wanted to break. Overhand right now, the left hand forward pressure from Morris. Bit of a face wash with the left hand from Morris. There is the bell. You can tell right there, Howard Davis didn't like that pressure. Didn't like getting hit. He didn't like getting pushed backwards. There is Charles Rosa in the corner of Trevor Morris.
any seconds. This is for Bell. And you can see there that good shot. And my Morris right there. Hardest shot landed of the round right there. This is some David Tank Abbott mid-90s MMA with the left-handed face wash of Trevor Morris. Pushing the face up. Just kind of wearing his opponent down, just pushing him around. That's tiring. When you get your head pushed around, it's demoralizing. You don't like it. Howard Davis does a measure, better job when he's standing on the outside, land that jab, waiting to land that two. First up to scratch, to start round number two, Howard Davis. Now joined at the scratch line, three feet oh, apart by Trevor Morris. All right. Good sportsmanship look, look. again. He's on at the end of round number one. Sportsmanship to start round number two. Howard Davis just addressed that, pushing the face up to the referee right there. Face wash, then the sportsmanship. Keep him up. Keep him up. Well, you okay? All right. I didn't see what happened there. Was it a little bit of a low blow? Low blow. Howard Davis took it. Not bothered. Now time called by Christopher Young. Davis thought he was ready to reset and then thought better of it. Now five minutes on the timeout clock. All right. Time in. Knuckle up. Took about five seconds. Now time in. Forward pressure immediately by Morris. So often talk about range fights. You're looking at a quintessential range fight. Five foot nine Trevor Morris, six foot two Howard Davis. Accentuated by the fighter's own words in their respective fighter meetings. Davis said, I have to stay on the outside, control with the jab. Morris said, establish myself in the pocket, then into the clinch. Morris is just stalking right now. Left hook from Davis. There's that snap jab from Davis. Morris has walked through some big jabs to do this, get to the inside. Defensively and smartly, Davis brings his hands together. That gets the break from Chris Young. And Morris keeps trying to throw this overhand right. He needs to turn that under to a you know, Overhand right there from Davis. I'll come to the body right there. 40 seconds remaining round two. Oh, that's nice. good body work from Davis. Overhand right, overhand left from Morris into the pocket. See, Morris keeps throwing that overhand right, just keeps missing. You're going to keep missing. You need to turn that under to a body shot. Flurry to the body from Davis. And Davis to the one. Davis starting to find his range right now. Trevor Moore is showing a lot of heart, a lot of toughness, a lot of tenacity, and this is pro combat out. sports out. debut. Free. And you can see right now Howard Davis still not wanting to utilize the clinch. He uses it just to break up. He needs, if he can really elevate his game, if he can really start using it offensively, get in there and learn how to throw punches from that position. Entry, good right hand from Morris. Chest to chest, there's the bell. We move to round three. Howard Davis really started to find his range in that round. Start landing some good body shots. Look at that, you got a good little cut right there over the, the left eye of Trevor Morris. Inside of Morris's left brow. One thing about bare knuckle, you always have the, the cut work doing a lot of work in between rounds. Luckily, we have some good ones. They, they usually always get the, the cut stopped, lets the fights continue. Only fans gives you our exclusive look. Back of the house here at Hard Rock Live, Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida. Isaac Doolittle versus Jake Bostwick. It is our main event tonight in the middleweight division. A massively pivotal fight for both men. The way to watch our main card is on the BKFC app. Round number three is our third and final free view prelim. Fast start off of scratch for Howard Davis. You can tell, man, Howard Davis is feeling it right now. He came out hard right away. Bounce in the step of Davis, resetting in the center circle. Charles Rosa implores Trevor Morris in the Morris corner. Get to the inside, clinch him. Davis now playing on the outside. Overhand right, counter right hand. 
Now to the inside comes Morris. Slickly to the outside is Davis. He cannot clown around too much with Trevor Morris. He's coming throwing bombs, Sean. Big overhand rights and left from Trevor Morris into the clinch. You see the framing in the clinch of Morris. He's done that twice now. No animosity. You saw both fighters smiling to touch a fist, then right back to it. Overhand right, short counter stubbing right by Davis. Good, good downward angle punch from Davis. Long jab. These wild punches right there being thrown by Fairmore. He's opening himself, but Howard Davis has not been able to connect on him yet. A tight striking guard for Morris. Those Davis punches could not get through. Faint now from Davis. Davis hands on hips. 30 seconds remaining round three. Overhand right from Morris. Overhand left from Trevor Morris. Morris knew he had to make this a rugged fight. Chris, he's making this a rugged fight. That's going to be a hard warning from referee Chris Young. Punch on the break. Keep it clean, Look, look. The apology from Morris right back to it. The left hand from Davis. Ten seconds, gentlemen, for the bell. Ten seconds. All goes into the bigger picture of Trevor Morris. To the inside, rough, rugged on the inside. There is the bell. And, Sean, when you throw those overhand rights and those powerful left hooks and you miss them, those are tiring. You put your body out of position. There's only so many fastballs you can throw. Trevor's throwing a lot of them right now. So we'll see if that affects his conditioning right there. Can't really hear what Howard Davis and Corner are saying right there, but Howard Davis jumped on his opponent right away at the beginning of that round. You can see he sees something, his body's open. It's Trevor Morris, he wants to land shots to there. Feels like he can end the fight if he can put a couple punches together, I feel. The seconds out whistle. We are set for round number four. All right, red corner, total line. All right, let's it up. Let's knuckle up. Ball of knuckle up from referee Christopher Young. There's the jab off of scratch from Morris. Lateral movement on the outside from Davis. Chris Morris, I think, is doing a good job. He's throwing the jab to close distance, understanding he's not going to land that jab from range, but it allows him to enter. That's the thing, you throw that jab and it gets your opponent to put his hands up, and then you can get to the inside. If you just try and step forward without throwing that jab, you're gonna get countered, just like that. Two punches on the counter from Davis, resetting. Forward from the center circle, again comes Trevor Morris. Right here, you can see Davis each round landed a few more shots. Tolling 42-26 right here. Our strike stats are presented by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Overhand right misses from Trevor Morris. And there's those hard right hands he keeps throwing. I'd like to see him turn them over to body shots. You can't duck underneath the body shot, Sean. 55 seconds remaining round four. Two punch combination to the head from Davis. Davis more and more throwing in combination as this fight progresses. Hard front shoulder now from Howard Davis. Morris resetting on the outside. Davis doing a little dance routine there. Morris again, there's that throwaway jab. Very smart from Trevor Morris, using it to close distance. Just like that on cue, resetting. Not finding the entry he wanted to Trevor Morris. 15 seconds remaining, round number four of this lightweight bout. Jab right back from Davis. Jab left hook on the lead left hook from Trevor Morris. Overhand right, just misses from Davis. Jab again from Morris, there is the bell. We move to the fifth and final round. Moments away from the start of our main card, BKFC 38. We're live tonight in South Florida in the city of Hollywood. 
Several Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, the way to watch our main card worldwide is on the BKFC app. He went in the fight. He went in the fight. At this point, I feel like Trevor has to feel like he's got to get inside. We got Howard Davis over there doing push-ups. Well, if he's trying to do that for the judges or for Trevor Morris or just trying to show everybody he still has energy. This fight, fight is, is over. over. Christopher Young waving off this fight. Not sure why, what exactly was going on there. Fight's over. Howard Davis Fight's now showing over. real compassion for Fight's his over. very gritty and determined opponent, Trevor Morris. And that is victory number three in BKFC for Howard Davis. Not without adversity, but well done from Howard Davis. I mean, was that a hand problem? Was it a head problem? What exactly? No, the fighter quit. Fighter. I seriously doubt this was a fighter retirement from Morris. This is either going to be a medical stoppage or a corner stoppage. I think Howard Davis sensed that something was up. He came out of his corner. He was walking around. You saw him doing push-ups. He definitely knew that something was going on in the Morris corner. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, the red corner calls a stop to this fight at the conclusion of round number four. For your winner by TKO, Howard H.D. Sean, I think we saw Howard Davis there who understands the sport a little bit more. He got cut the last time he fought. He doesn't want that to happen again. Smoother, smarter, fought a very good fight there. So the clarification from Jeff Houston, it was a corner stoppage. Trevor Morris, though, doing some really good things. But not just his BKFC debut, this was his pro combat sports debut. And Howard Davis continues to roll in BKFC. He is most definitely a fighter to watch at 155 pounds. Rough and rugged was Trevor Morris. Davis found his range from the outside, throws the jab, continues to land that jab all the way through to victory. The winner by way of fourth round TKO due to corner stoppage, Howard Davis defeats Trevor Morris. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Tonight only, you'll receive a free gift with any purchase of $25 or more at BareKnuckleShop.com. Check out the huge selection of merch to choose from, the sizes and styles for everyone. You can place your order now at BareKnuckleShop.com. And again, a reminder, if you spend $25 or more, you'll receive a free gift. So knuckle up at BareKnuckleShop.com.